models for valuing uh, the uh, for valuing uh, the stocks is the discounted cash flow model discounted cash flows now what do we need to take as cash flows so from this dimension we say there are three different kinds of proxies which we can use for the cash flow purpose one is the dividend that is what we are going to deal with uh, in this uh, session in full but apart from dividend we would also have a free cash flow which is used as a proxy to the cash flow or when i say discounted cash flow model what is it that is used as cash flows so we can talk about using dividend as a cash flow because uh, any equity investor if he has uh, invested in a security the main cash flow that he is getting from the company for his investment is the dividend itself so dividend can very well be used as uh, a cash flow apart from that we also have the scenarios where we can use free cash flow we have defined it earlier and we will define it when required free cash flow is also an alternate uh, to dividend for uh, uh, for uh, using it as a cash flow in the dcf model and there is one more aspect called residual income and when i talk about the dividends all that is required is you project or you expect how much dividend could be paid by the company in the next few years what is the expected dividend over the remaining uh, life of the company so that particular dividend we are estimating first using various mechanisms and then discounting all those dividends to the present value to say that this is the worth of equity security that's the simple dividend based valuation model so because this is very heavily dependent on dividends as uh, the payouts every company which has a good history of dividend payments good and consistent history of dividend payments can very well use this discounted dividend model for valuation purpose and not just a good uh, history of dividend but the dividend policy is in line with the earnings as the earnings as the net income of the company is growing probably the dividend is also growing so probably it's like a constant or more or less constant kind of payout ratio is getting maintained means as the earnings are growing the dividends are also growing it's not ad hoc dividend but there is some kind of a pattern with respect to the dividend that is getting declared even that those kind of companies it's worth evaluating uh, their performance using the discounted dividend kind of a model and because we are heavily dependent on dividend as the input then dividend is generally uh, uh, decided by the management but distributed uh, even to a very minority uh, shareholder also we say we can use this model quite effectively if the valuation is from the perspective of a minority or a small time investor and to a large extent what we observe is the companies which are declaring uh, this dividends they declare it more or less uh, in a in a predefined constant pattern so the earnings are much lesser volatile which means uh, even uh, the valuation uh, which we are doing using this mechanism may not be that heavily volatile kind of a scenario so how do we do the valuation using the discounted uh, dividend model and all we'll uh, go through in our next few slides but just to understand the other two models also a free cash flow based model the way i can define the free cash flow is what is the cash that is available with the company after it has spent on all the operating expenses and even the capital expenses required to run the business after incurring all these uh, expenses whatever is the cash that is left with the company 
which can be distributed to its investors whether the company distributes it or not is immaterial here what is the cash that the business has generated after all the expenses being removed what can be used to be paid towards the investors it could be debt investors or equity investors but what is the cash that is available for payment to them <clears throat> that is what we define as the pre cash flow so uh, wherever the dividends are not that consistent or ad hoc or a company is not paying any kind of a dividend in all these scenarios we can very well resort to the free cash flow based valuation because in a free cash flow it is really immaterial whether the company has paid a dividend or not it is what really is coming into picture here is what is the company's potential what is the cash that it has really generated to be paid to the investors whether it pays it or retains it it is out of scope for us here so that is what we are trying to look at when we are going for a pre cash flow based model so much better than a dividend based model especially when the dividend history is not that good for the company and <coughs> this is also helpful when you are trying to do the valuation from the perspective of a controlling stakeholder not a minority shareholder it can help uh, from the minority shareholders perspective also but definitely a value addition when we are looking at it from uh, a, a controlling stakeholders perspective because as a simple thing the controlling stakeholder can very well change the dividend policy so you don't need to really go with the declared dividends or proposed uh, dividends as the base for valuing the firm so irrespective so it is it is clearly working out on how much cash is available with the firm and even for the future we are trying to project what would be the expected uh, free cash flows for the firm and uh, based on that discounting all those free cash flows to the present value to say to to compute the valuation of that particular equity security the only drawback being <coughs> if the company is generating a negative cash flows especially in uh, the initial years especially for a capital intensive kind of a project right initial years capital intensive kind of projects we may very well see that the cash flows are negative so if there are continuously negative free cash flows especially for the next few years then it is not advised to go for a free cash flow approach otherwise uh, compared to a dividend discounting model kind of an approach free cash flow is uh, much more better because the dividend policy is really immaterial in this case so we'll have a detailed discussion regarding the free cash flow based uh, valuation model slightly in our later sessions similarly just to understand the third cash flow that is used as a part of the dcf models is the residual income based cash flow residual income is nothing but see we know the expectations of the investors let's say they are expecting a required rate of return of r and they have invested some e amount equity amount so their their expected return every year what is their required return their percentage is r percent and they have invested e so r e is the typical uh, expected return of the investor now if the company has generated a net income which is greater than this if the net income that the company has generated the earnings the company has generated is greater than what is expected out of the investors that is what we call as a residual income so if the residual income is positive it talks about uh, <coughs> a good image the company has uh, built up so probably uh, resulting in uh, the stock price going up and vice versa so it is a uh, it is uh, applicable uh, even for those companies where uh, negative free cash flows come up because this uh, 
the free cash flow can be negative but in this case the net income is still positive right there is a possibility of net income remaining positive while the free cash flow is negative for a good performing firm uh, initial capital expenditure in the income statement only the depreciation part of it goes in whereas uh, into the balance sheet or whereas into the cash flow statement the entire expense uh, that is spent on the capital expenditure is uh, going in so from that standpoint it is very much possible that uh, the free cash flow can be negative whereas the net income can be positive so for those kind of firms probably using residual income based uh, model is much more uh, appropriate than the free uh, than the dividend or free cash flow based models so when we are not able to apply the dividend as well as the free cash flow kind of approaches then it is better to look at uh, the residual income based approach but yes this is heavily dependent on the income statement of the company and uh, uh, income statement as we know is very much uh, prone to tampering so uh, heavy uh, estimates of the management and heavily dependent on uh, uh, how the management is transparent in terms of preparing these financial statements it is very much uh, uh, reliable only when the quality of the financial statements is good enough the quality of earnings is uh, good enough but uh, if there is any possibility of any kind of uh, tamperings possible on the income statement then uh, uh, the residual uh, income based model of valuation will be completely flawed so in general people use these three kinds of uh, cash flows for valuing the firm using uh, the discounted cash flow mechanism and in this uh, chapter we would be uh, focusing uh, slightly into more detail on the dividend based discounting model for valuation of the security and in the next couple of sessions i would also uh, cover in detail about the free cash flow based valuation as well as the residual income based valuations also so getting into the dividend discount based model whatever is the dcf model that is being used the fundamentals are straight forward for us whenever i want to do a valuation it is nothing but the present value of the future cash flows right whatever may be the mechanism present value of the future cash flows so in, in this case all we think of is a future cash flow is nothing but the future dividend so whether we are holding that stock for one year two years or 200 years it doesn't matter all i have to do using the dcf model is identify all the future dividends and discount them to the present value that would give the value of the 